Hi viewer, I welcome you to Edim TV. It is the station where you watch and learn. I'll be taking you through geography from one lesson number 22. The topic it is field work. I'm your tutor, Rosy Modoni. Welcome. Let us look at the field, uh, our lesson goes today. By the end of the lesson, the learner should be able to identify the field work procedures. So today we are dealing with the fieldwork procedures. Let us get started. Um, before we get to the fieldwork procedures, uh, I want to define what is a procedure. A procedure is an established way of doing things. And it must be followed step by step. So you don't mix up the steps. That is the reason why it is referred to the procedure. The fieldwork procedure it is straightforward and involves a series of activities to be completed in order to certain objectives. So for you to get the objectives that you want to get, you must follow up the fieldwork procedures uh, in a series. The normal pattern that the feedwork procedure takes is summarized below. That is the feedwork procedure. One, identify the topic. After identification of the topic, state the objectives. That is the statement of objectives. After the statement of objectives, you formulate the hypothesis. After the formulation of the hypothesis, you prepare for the fieldwork and you conduct the study. Let us have a look at all these step by step. We start by the identification of the topic. The topic of study refers to the title of the field study that is to be carried out. So the title, number two, the title can be drawn from a topic that has already been studied in the classroom. So we get the title from whatever you have learned in classroom. It should be stated in a short, clear, and precise statement. Example, a study of weather station, a study of Uhuru market, a study of Savo National Park. Those are very simple. They are very short. They are precise and clear statements. We get to the next one, which is the statement of objectives. When it comes to the statement of objectives, one, it is understanding what is an objective. An objective describes the actual detail that the researcher intends to get during the study. Every topic of study must be relevant to the topic of study. Every objective must be relevant to the topic of study. They should be stated in short, clear sentences. I've given an example there, the topic of study of Uhuru market. To find out where the market is established, to find out the goods sold in the market, to investigate where the goods sold in the market come from, to identify, to analyze. So you must use the word either to identify, to investigate, to find out, uh, to analyze, uh, all those ones, you must use them. Then, a good ob objective must be smart. A good objective must be smart. That is, it, it should be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time. Next, it is formulation of hypothesis. 
a hypothesis in the researchers one speculation about the problem in question. It is a tentative answer to the problem in question. So just a tentative answer, one speculation, what you expect to get. It is therefore a theory that has not been yet been approved or yet been proven. The researcher makes make guesses on the basis of any knowledge they have in the area of study. The fieldwork exercise revolves around the testing of the hypothesis to establish whether or not they can be accepted as statements or not. They can be accepted as statement of fact. There are two types of hypotheses that you can formulate non hypothesis and substantive hypothesis. Now, when we talk about the non hypothesis, it is stated negatively. And substantive hypothesis, it is stated positively. What are the good characteristics of a good hypothesis? It has an element of comparison, whereby two or three items are compared. Number two, the quantity, quantitative ones that are supposed to be used should be easily measurable, i.e. more, most, majority, or. And avoid ones like a lot, many, few, those ones should be avoided. That the hypothesis leaves room for yes or no. It must be relevant to one or more of objective in question. And hypothesis should not be obvious. Most of good examples, we can say most of the goods comes from the outside the country. That is now talking about the hypothesis for the Uhuru market. Most of the goods comes from the outside the country. <coughs> Number two, peak hour in the market is early in the morning. That is also another hypothesis. Then, how the goods sold in the market are agricultural products. All those ones are speculations of what I expect to get from the Uhuru market. Fourth, it is the preparation of the field work. Students and researchers should prepare adequately before going out for the field study. The more there are preparation, the more successful the field study. The sequence of activities involved in preparation is outlined in the chart below. We have seeking permission, that is you seek permission, conduct a reconnaissance, adjust objective and hypothesis, choose the methods of data correction, assemble necessary tools, prepare a working schedule, then finally divide the student in groups. That is the, the work that we are going to do in our, our next lesson. Activity for today, explain four characteristics of a good hypothesis. Number two, highlight the fieldwork preparation procedure. Reference book, get the KRB 2003 Secondary Geography, Student Book 1, third edition. If at all you want to contact us, you can get us from the SMS. You can also get us from the YouTube, from the Facebook, and also you can... Twitter us.